Hey everyone, it's Jen Rothman coming to you from Solutions Counseling, a uh, clinical counselor for 22 plus years now. So I'm going to tell you a little bit uh, about some of the things in my life. Uh, lots of uh, people are experiencing family members or people that they know uh, committing suicide at this time. And there are presently 5.5 deaths per day due to overdoses or other forms of suicide. So I'll take you back a little bit. My son was in a mountain bike accident back in 2012. Even saying that uh, hits home. Um, I'm blessed to have him alive. It's been a long haul. It was a month before his 19th birthday and two days before my youngest son's 17th birthday. So my youngest son at that time became the man of the house because of course I got the phone call saying, we don't think your son's gonna make it, but we're gonna airlift him to VGH. So on, since that time, I mean, he had to learn to walk, talk, eat, go to the bathroom, everything on his own all over again. He didn't know who I was. He didn't know a lot of things. He's been through a lot. There is not a lot of help for those out there being the family of the victims that have been hurt. Um, I certainly didn't find anything. There's six weeks of rehabilitation after they get out of the hospital. My son was in a coma for quite some time. So I stayed in the waiting room. I stayed anywhere where, where they would let me. Eventually I moved across the street. So I didn't get home to see my youngest son. Uh, then he was moved to GF Strong. And anybody who's had a brain injury or concussion knows that you're just so sensitive to light, to noise, uh, quick movements. You're very dizzy. There's so many different things that everybody experiences concussions or TBIs differently. None of us are the same. So we bring him home and Christmas time was his first suicide attempt. So uh, that was a real shocker to me, but I knew he wasn't happy. He was, he felt in his words, we are all just bacteria on the face of this earth. Um, how hard is it for those that we love that don't want to be here anymore? How do we support them? The next suicide attempt was the following year where he ran a red light and he hit two other vehicles. That was horrific for me because that's the way his father died when I was pregnant at five and a half months. So I could see both sides of the story and it was, it was, uh, it was something that I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy. And then the third one, he drove out to uh, the Patillo, or no, to Whistler, back up to Whistler, was looking for the highest building to jump off of. Then there was another one where, uh, thank God, we have a great police department. Uh, we had choppers out looking for him. Uh, and they found him at the Patillo Bridge, ready to jump. Um, the medications that they're put on, they're up, they're down, they're backwards and forwards, they're treated like guinea pigs. And again, I'll go back to the family members because we look like we're lunatics because we see what are, what's happening in uh, our families, our loved ones, uh, friends' lives. We see them go from, I'm fine, how's everything with you? To, I feel like shit, I, I just wanna die. And it can be as quick as, that and so four years or five years into it I think at that point maybe even maybe it was even longer it could have been seven years into it I remember saying to my son and, and I love my son I, I love both of them very much um they've gone through a lot I'm a single mom I work very hard to get to where I am and it hasn't been easy you know all of us work very hard to get to where we are but when you are self-employed and you have to put your life on hold, um, 
it's, it's difficult. And I know many of you know about that, whether you have, you know, a full-time job or you have your own business or whatever it is, uh, the, the thought of suicide at all scares the hell out of us, whether it be drugs or cars or, or, or anything. We, we worry about our loved ones all the time. So at one point I said to him, look, I can no longer be your prisoner if you choose to be a victim. I said, I love you. I love you with all my heart. I will always love you no matter what your choice is. This was probably the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my life. And it's been 12 years almost now. And I, that was the first time that he stopped talking about suicide. And he actually started to, to want to live, just didn't know how to live. And then they get into a situation of the self-esteem is gone. They don't remember who they were, who they are, what's the point of living. They don't know how to talk to people. Um, they don't have friends anymore. They say maybe inappropriate things, or maybe they beat everybody up, or they become a perfect and and feel as though they have to strive and strive and strive to be somebody. I'm here to tell you that we don't have to be anybody but ourselves. And if that's not good enough for somebody else, then that's something the other person has to work on. We have to look at ourselves every day in the mirror and we have to be able to say high five to ourselves. You know, high five, have that community that you can high five with and know that I will be a part of your high five community. Anytime you want to reach out, you can go to my website at www.solutionscounseling.com and connect with me. This goes much deeper. It goes into addiction. It goes into codependency. It goes into boundaries. It goes into, I can't even, the list is a mile long and then some. So when you need support, you reach out. I'll be there. Great chatting with you guys. Cheers.